Let's talk about how we can linearize a plot. In other words, make a plot that's not linear into a plot that is. Let's imagine we have some data on the mass of a bunch of cubes. So we have cubes of different length, and then we've got their masses. And we want to somehow get some information about that. So we, we take our data, we plot it. Uh, let's make a scatter plot. Great. Okay, and before we even try to make this into a nice plot, we look at this and say, oh, okay, I'm going to fit this to a line. And clearly this makes no sense. And even if the, the, the curvature was less pronounced so that the R squared would be close to 1, you'd know right away it's a mistake to fit data like this to a straight line because the deviation is systematic. In other words, we're above, we're below, we're above. So it's not just that the points are scattered around the line, there's a systematic way in which they deviate from the line. So it's totally inappropriate to fit this to a line. So if we wanted to do a linear fit, uh, we have to somehow plot the data a different way. And that's, that's uh, what we call uh, linearizing the data. And normally when we do this, we have some good reason for knowing how the two variables are related, in this case, length and the mass. So down here we have the mass is uh, basically you multiply the density by the volume, you get the mass. And we see, oh, wait a second. Uh, the volume is the length cubed. And uh, so there should be definitely not a linear relationship. It should be that the linear relationship is not between mass and length, between mass and the, and the cube of the length. Because the goal when you're trying to make something be a straight line is that you want everything that's not a variable to be constant. So you want your slope and y-intercept to be constant. So if we wanted to have y equals mx plus b, you could have y be mass, your density be the slope, and the volume would be your variable, not your length. So in other words, what we're going to do is instead of plotting length, we're going to plot length cubed, because then the leftover bit, the density, would be the slope. And to be a straight line, the slope has to be constant. And now if we're looking at uh, all, all these cubes are made of the same thing, of course the density will be constant. So you have to make sure that you group your function such that everything that is not the x variable and the y variable has to be constant. In other words, your slope and y-intercept. Now if we graph this as y plus equals m x, with this whole thing being x, plus b, we can see in this case the, the y-intercept is going to be uh, approximately 0. So let's go ahead and do this. So we're going to instead have our new x variable is going to be length cubed. So we'll just put that and we'll call it uh, length cubed. And you can, if you want, in Excel, uh, do superscripts just like you in Word. Just right click and say Format Cells and tell it that you want to do a superscript. Okay. Okay. So we've got that's going to be our, uh, our new x value. And we need, so let's go ahead and make that. So it's going to be our length cubed. Let's have all of this be a little bit bigger. Okay, so we've got our length cubed, and our y would be our mass. And we have to probably put some units on that. And we already have mass, so we'll just we could copy it or we can just do it that way. Okay, so we've got our mass in grams. Now we plot this, this should be an actual line if we did everything correctly. So insert, chart, let's do a scatter. Okay, and this, despite the noise in it that's characteristic of experimental data, we can see, oh wait, that is looking like there's not a systematic deviation. They're just scattered randomly around the line. And let's go ahead and get an equation for our line. And we can see the slope. I'll type that a little bigger so you can see that. It's 
So the slope was equal to 19.42. Now what does that mean? Well, we said this was x, this was x, and this was y, which means this has to be the slope. So that has to be equal to the density. And now we have to say, wait a minute, but what about the units? Obviously, a number without units is completely meaningless. Well, slope has units of delta y over delta x. So what are the units of our y over here? We didn't label this over here. Um, but we plotted the y variable as being mass. So the delta y is going to be mass, and we plotted it in grams. So delta y is going to be grams. What about delta x? Well, x, remember, was not the length. It was length cubed. So it has that units. And the length units we used were centimeters. So grams per centimeter cubed are units. So make sure that you're comfortable pulling the units for a slope and a y-intercept directly from your graph by looking at the units on the graph.